Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Benchmade Fact, a long, needle-like, pokey, super tactical uh, uh, Benchmade knife. This is in the Benchmade Black class, uh, or well, it comes with a black box. Um, and it's listed as tactical and everyday carry. Um, the I used to think that the black class meant like, you know, ultra restricted. I think it means that some knives in the black class might be restricted for one reason or another. But as somebody who lives in Kansas and can carry anything and has handled a ton of knives, it, it basically is just a Benchmade that comes in a black box. Um, this is a, a manual um, uh, operating uh, Benchmade. And it's really interesting. Um, I honestly didn't think that I would, that there was anything here that I might enjoy, but um, I was uh, proven wrong in a lot of ways. So uh, thank you so much to Scott Whittington from USA Made Blade for providing this knife for review. Uh, check out USA Made Blade. I always have my own links down in the description, but you guys should check out USA Made Blade. I've been shopping with them for way longer than the channel has been in operation, and Scott is an excellent person. So thank you so much. Also, thank you to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and other benefits, there's, of course, a link right down in the description. Your support means the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. This is a long, long pointy knife. Overall length of the fact coming in at 8.75 inches overall. Blade length, 4 inches. Cutting edge, 3.75 at least, maybe 3.8 inches of cutting edge. Long knife. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. The Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7.25 inches overall. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action this guy? The action's really impressive. Manual flooring, watch this, ready? Brand new, ooh, nice and smooth. Nice snap with the uh, axis lock and very easy to deploy. Um, I generally, skinnier knives make it a little bit difficult to deploy the knife. And while it does feel very foreign versus a knife that has a more, ch like something like this, this is totally different. These are contoured. Um, they have obvious lines for your fingers. I mean, not that this doesn't, right? The blade profile is different. It creates a different experience. This knife, very, very easy and honestly really satisfying to deploy. There's a lot of blade that comes flying out of the handle. Very, the problem here with this is that it's very aggressive looking, right? It looks like a, uh, a stiletto from, uh, you know, is it, do they have the switch blades and gangs in New York? This honestly looks like something that a guy flipping a coin in a, in a New York City alley might be carrying. Nothing against New York City, sorry. I'm just like setting the scene for the movie that I like a guy in a trench coat and he's got the fedora, right? He's got a toothpick hanging out of his mouth and he's flipping a, you know, a gold coin that's not a part of any currency system. <laughs> and, and he's got this, right? And you can see the reflection from the blade and just setting the tone, right? That's what it looks like. And not that that's what it is. I'm saying that's, for, for non-knife people, that's how this looks. Looks a little scary and aggressive. But man, is it satisfying and cool uh, to deploy. Really, really easy uh, to do. I'm really impressed with that. This guy does run on phosphor bronze, so that's great. Uh, how about a hardware check? Let's go ahead and get out my tools here. Uh, I've got expensive and inexpensive tools that you guys can check out right down in the description. Uh, I believe the pivot, like most Benchmades, is going to be a T10. For a long time, I forgot about that, and I kept trying to shove a T8 in there. Yeah, T, uh, T10. t Now, unfortunately, Benchmade likes to do this thing where they have a T10 pivot and T6 body screws. I don't like T6. The rest of the body screws are T6. I don't like them because they strip easily. The bits that I use, the teeth wear down more easily, even if they're Wea, right? Well, you should just have a steady hand. Eh, whatever. I don't like T6. It's not a deal breaker, right? Um, we've got one, two... Well, this one holds in a stop pin. So, I mean, three screws on the outside, three on the other side. So more than what I consider minimal, and they're T6. It sucks, but it's not a deal breaker. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here, 
it feels thick because it's such a long knife but it's actually just ever so slightly thicker than the Para 3. Uh, how about length and height up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3? Uh, two knives are a bit awkward in the pocket. Nobody ever seems to complain about it. Uh, lengthwise, it's about the same as the Para 3. It's definitely longer than the, uh, I'm sorry, it's about as long as the PM2. Uh, it's definitely longer than the uh, Para 3. Thickness is about the same. Height, nowhere even close, right? You have really shallow pockets, this isn't going to work for you. Or if knives like the PM2 and Para 3 are too thick, this isn't going to work for you. But otherwise, it's pretty easy to carry. Um, we are looking at a combination on the scales of hard coat anodized aluminum and steel for the liners. And then the blade stock thickness, I'm going to guess, is probably a pretty typical... Typical? <laughs> <laughs> typical 120 thousandths, and I say typical like for Benchmade knives, just guessing. What? Is it less than that? Maybe I'm just wrong. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit less than that. That's fine. I think it needs to be considering you don't have a lot of room to drop before the cutting edge, so there you go. Weight, I think this is probably going to come in something like four ounces. That's my guess, but I'm being thrown off by the profile for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's 3.17 ounces. So your ratios are awesome on this guy. This is very close to what I consider to be ultra lightweight. I typically carry knives between four and six and a half ounces, but that's my brain judging the profile on how it feels. This knife, for whatever reason, feels heavier than that, but it's not. It's 3.17 ounces, right? So you go by the ounce and inch thing, you go by the four ounce thing. It's under both of those. The only way it's going to bother you is if uh, it's maybe maybe if the Para 3 and PM2 are too thick for you or if you have super shallow pockets, in which case this won't fit. It also isn't going to work for people who live in an area where something like this is going to be illegal for the blade length. It doesn't have an, it's not a switchblade, right? Some areas outside the United States have laws against locking knives, so this isn't going to work for you, right? There you go. It is what it is. I imagine it's these huge holes in the aluminum and steel that help with that, right? Aluminum's not necessarily super heavy. The steel liners are pretty typical for uh, Benchmade, but maybe maybe that's why. So anyways, um, I think we got through all of that. Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here. So like I said, the top scale is aluminum. Corners are nicely knocked down. It has this, honestly, this is pretty um, appealing to the touch, this texturing that they've got going on in the aluminum. And it certainly does add uh, some additional traction or some much needed traction for a handle shape that doesn't have a lot to hold your hands in place. So uh, that traction is much appreciated. The nice thing about the handle though is that there's an enormous amount of room. I mean, you can see there, I, I've got the freedom to move around quite a bit. Uh, and uh, it, it honestly is really comfortable. Pocket clip is a little bit different than what we typically see for Benchmade. Honestly, it reminds me of something I see from Protec. It's great. I wish the screws are recessed, but it's not. It has that swoop down here. This is a great pocket clip. Really, really cool. It's neat that it's something unique, uh, you know, instead of what we typically see for Benchmade. Normally, I don't like holes in the blade. Kind of goes along with the theme here, and I don't mind that it's just straight and they're just ovals. Honestly, it looks pretty good. Corners inside of the holes are nicely knocked down. There's nothing sharp on the outside. The texturing might start to tear your pants up a little bit. It's fairly deep. Uh, but for the most part, I think you're going to be okay. Fit and finish all the way around on this guy is really good. Really, really nice. Some of the issues that can plague Benchmade knives, are they just don't seem to be present on this. I love that it's pillar construction. They didn't try to do some wacky backspacer, right? Nice and easy to clean out. Pretty cool. Honestly, I think for the design, scales are a tad thick. How can you say that when you love the pair of three? I guess it's a hard... I mean, I just want it to be thinner because the whole thing is this long, skinny thing, right? And they probably just could have done with, like, all aluminum scales and then countersunk the steel liners and it would have reduced the weight a little bit more and kept all the integrity and shrunk down the thickness. But it would be even more expensive and it's already a pretty expensive knife because it's a freaking bench made, right? But it is made in the United States. I don't know. I like the, the fit and finish all the way around is really good. Some jimping up here, right? So you can bear down on if you want to. Uh, behind the edge... Uh, it's it's fairly thick. It's just not a lot of room to drop. I mean, like, so you listen. If you if you really need to break down a cardboard box with this, you can do it. This is more of a puncture blade, right? It'll slice. It'll cut. It'll do what it needs to do, right? The edge is done well. This is S30V, and it's got that distinct Benchmade toothiness to it, but it is consistent, right? And it is going to tear into packages and things like that. If you're cutting into something really dense, this will do it for sure. Um, the blade is also very attractive. It is definitely a spear point blade. Uh, this is not sharp up here. looks like it might be, but no. This is just a large swedge. There is a flat that carries almost right through the middle of the blade, um, coming down to like 60%, right? 
Um, not a durable blade out here. This is definitely a blade where if you, you try to get in and do you like your pry cuts and things, you're probably going to snap that tip. Um, I understand. I mean, like aesthetically, I understand why they went for a swedge, but functionally it would have been great if the flat was much higher and you had just a tiny swedge and you had more room to drop to the cutting edge, making it a little thinner. It's still going to cut, right? It's, I mean, knives like this, uh, there's generally just, they, they had an aesthetic goal with it and they definitely achieved it. This is an attractive looking long skinny knife. Um, unfortunately, because of where they put the flat, it makes it not as thin behind the edge as it could have been, which honest, honestly would have only been marginally better, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how I feel about that. I think it still would have looked good if the flat was higher and there was just a much smaller swedge, but some people aren't gonna care. And truthfully, it's still gonna do what you expect it to do, which is cut. Um, another uh, small issue here is that the um, thumb stud is slightly in the cutting path. So about that much, uh, maybe half an inch, two thirds of an inch, right, are rendered meaningless if you're gonna cut straight down. So that means right here, if you're gonna cut straight down into something, it's gonna, you're gonna be three quarters of an inch away from your index finger. So not that big of a deal. There's a lot of handle and you can still put a lot of force into it, right? Um, anyways, let's go ahead and flip the knife over, take a look at this pocket clip one more time. Really, like I said, really, really like the pocket clip. It's fully ambidextrous design and there is a mounting position for the pocket clip on the other side. So lefties rejoice. Uh, this is tip up only, which is fine. That's the only way I like to carry the knife uh, or any knife, right? Um, you do have access to, you know, there's plenty of room to access it from the other side with the uh, middle fingers. So you can easily do the reverse flick or the thumb flick. It's just very comfortable to deploy and you can do it over and over again. There's an odd charm that comes with this lo a long skinny knife that's really easy to deploy. Obviously, if this were a frame lock, it would be much harder because you'd have to watch out for where you're putting your fingers, but it's not. It's an access lock um, and it's got the aluminum scales on the outside, right? Um, I think this also could have been done in G10 um, and it would have been fine with countersunk steel liners. Uh, they like the, they like aluminum for their, their black class or their tactical class, whatever you want to call that. It's all right. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, aluminum and countersunk steel liners, again, would have lightened it up a lot and made it really appealing to people looking for a long skinny knife with a lot of blade that doesn't weigh very much, right? But it is what it is and the weight still came in great. So I suppose I don't really know what I'm complaining about. Um, I'm sure it's a D-shaped pivot barrel as most Benchmades are, right? Okay, so little things that I can complain about. It's pretty thick behind the edge, even considering it's not thick on the spine to begin with. Thumb studs a little bit in the cutting path. It's utilizing T6 screws. It's a little bit thicker than I would have liked it to be. Um, and it's gonna be a little delicate at the tip. It's definitely gonna be illegal for some people. And it's also a pretty aggressive looking knife. This is not, I mean, like if you're gonna EDC this, you're instant, you're, you're immediately, to people who don't know you, there you you know you could be wearing a suit and tie, and you whip this thing out, and all of a sudden you're that weasel from Roger Rabbit wearing the green zoot suit. That's how people are gonna perceive you, right? I understand we got all, there's lone wolves. So I don't care what anybody thinks, you know. But that, that it can cause a problem sometimes, you know, and it is something I think people should be cognizant of. I certainly am. This isn't something that I want to whip out at my nephew's birthday party, right? That's more of a that's more of a Victorinox cadet. Uh, day, you know, or, or uh, event, you know, but, uh, you know, do what you want. It's your money. Uh, benefits here. It is cool. The ratios are great. It's made super well, man. The, uh, by the way, the, the, uh, centering on this guy is spot on. We see it. Yeah. Centering on this guy is spot on and it absolutely locks up completely solid. No matter how light I can get. So a lot of benchmates have centering issues. They got, you know, uh, wiggle issues, they got blade play issues. Not this guy, this is solid. And I imagine it's because it's a newer Benchmade model. So I appreciate that. You get an excellent warranty with it, right? That's great. So the biggest benefits here are uh, the weight to uh, overall length and blade length ratios are really, really good. Materials are pretty good uh, for the money. This is S30V, we didn't talk about that. It's perfectly, perfectly acceptable in this price range. Benchmade has an excellent, excellent warranty. Um, the fit and finish on this thing is just really good for a Benchmade. It's it's where it should be, but I feel like I should point that out. Um, and then, uh, you know, it actually has this odd satisfaction. Um, it's very smooth. It is oddly satisfying to deploy and you can actually do the uh, reverse flick on it, which is cool. It's neat, right? Um, this isn't gonna be for everybody and it's not my favorite thing in the world. The price is $200 which I think is high. I am so on the fence about this. I, th here's the thing. For EDC, for the vast majority of people, 
Um, I don't think that this is going to, you know, be your thing. But I also can't argue with the fact that this is a really well-made Benchmade and they executed it well, right? Um, so, I mean, even though it's not my favorite thing in the whole world aesthetically or, you know, like the style of it, and I think that there's going to be a lot of people who are just like, uh, nah, it's not really for me. I can't deny that it's made well. I mean, the, the choices that they made were great. There's a lot of little teeny tiny things here that they did right. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I this is something that I can recommend. I wish it was like 170 or 175. It's 200, but just, I mean, all things get. If this had the typical Benchmade flaws, like the, you know, if it had the blade wiggle and the centering was off and the fit and finish wasn't perfect, right? Um, then maybe I'd pull the reins back, but no, this was executed really well. You have to really like long, skinny, stiletto-style knives, right? And uh, you have to be really into the whole ratios thing, but this is good. Um, it's not... I, people are going to get a little frustrated with the geometry, but it's still going to get the job done. This is cool. It's made well. The price is... Meh. It's USA made, and Benchmade has a great warranty, right? It's just enough where I can say, yeah, it's recommendable. I honestly didn't expect to put it in that um, playlist, but yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, surprise me, <laughs> surprise me for sure. This is not one that I would have requested to check out, but Scott said he wanted to send it to me. So, okay, great. Uh, like I said, I don't get anything for that. I don't get anything from USA Made. They're not letting me keep this. This goes back to them not being paid. These are my honest opinions, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I was surprised by this one. It's, it's, uh, honestly, I'm sitting here going, I can't believe I just <laughs> ended with this going in the recommended nice place, but it is. It's cool. Uh, anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it. Thanks again, Scott, USA Made Blade. Check out usamadeblade.com uh, for some awesome knives and gear. Uh, and be sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We'll just leave that right there. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do not like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.